Hello everybody and welcome back to Throttle Grotto. Today we're testing a new microphone and I'm going to show you how I did the alternator swap in the Datsun. Stay tuned. <music> Well, the new microphone died and didn't let me know. <laughs> Probably I forgot to charge it. Um, so I get to refilm all of this. Wonderful. Um, so this is the original alternator. As you can see, it does not turn well. Um, it actually like spun on the car, but makes a lot of horrible noises. Um, one of the issues with this alternator is that it's in it's an externally regulated alternator, which means that all of the power functions that control how much power go to the car are done outside in an external regulator. Newer alternators have all that done internally and uh, is a much, uh, much more durable and less expensive scenario. So in comparison to have this one rebuilt um, was going to be at least $150. Um, I can buy them online. I think most of the vendors that sell these online, Reman, sell them for about $200. Um, <laughs> so I decided to try to save myself some money. Um, I bought, well, I'll show you what I bought. All right, so this is what I bought. It is the 14255 Endurance. Let's see if I have any other information on this. So it was a... B80 Nissan Datsun B210, and it cost me $52.99. So, uh, much more inexpensive solution, but I had to come up with some ways to make this work. Um, now, unfortunately, you can't see underneath the alternator. Um, you can see on the back here where I had to, right behind the fuel line, of course. Um, Right there where I had to cut the ear off because it was interfering slightly with the rear bracket. Um, and I probably could have spent some time and shaved it down and made it work so it supports it from the rear. But I don't think it's actually necessary. Um, it sits in here pretty well on its front, just the front ear and bolted at the top as it is. So what did I have to do to make this work in the car? Well, I'll show you. Okay, so this is the old alternator and we're simulating the really long alternator bolt with my screwdriver, which goes in there like that. And then if you imagine back here somewhere is the, uh, the stock bracket that it goes into. We'll say that it's right about there. <laughs> so if you pretend that the stock bracket is here and this is how it bolts in and tightens up and holds everything in place and plays well with others, that's great. Um, the issue that we ran into is that the front ear on this alternator is much narrower. Um, now it's not quite this narrow, um, but since it's narrower, what I had to do was add so we'll pretend that this one that I cut off is the front one. I had to add some spacers to make up the difference on the bolt and then put it back in the car. It was really that simple. Now, yes, there are some of you that are going to say that since it's a narrower piece and it's further out on the bolt that it's putting more leverage and more stress on this bolt and it could break and it could crack the ear on the alternator. And yes, all of those things are foreseeably possible. But for a $52 alternator versus a $200 one, I'm willing to take the risk. So the last step you can see here, um, right here is the internally or the externally regulated voltage regulator, which bolts to the firewall. Um, all of the things that I did to the car are reversible. If someone, huh, God bless them, if they want to uh, do a restoration on this car, more power to them. Um, there you can see the blue the blue mount there that the alternator bolts to with the extra long bolt and nut. Um, so wiring it up was pretty easy. I used like a generic three wire guide to wire this up. So the top wire there goes down to the main power feed, which is the same main power feed that I used from, or I took from the old alternator. 
and it just goes back into the stock wiring harness. The second wire, the red one, goes into this little harness that I built down here, and then the other end of that wire connects to a spade connector, which plugs into the uh, key-on circuit from the, uh, from the original harness. And then I made a little jumper wire that can connect across these two terminals here to send power back and forth across to back to the fuse box. Now the harness that I built here runs under the battery into the car and to this idiot light, which I wired up. Haven't figured out where I'm going to put it yet because I don't have a glove box. <laughs> which is also why the fuse box is laying on the ground because the fuse box mounts to the glove box. And I don't have a glove box, so there it lays on the ground in shame, thinking about all the things that it's done or hasn't done over the course of its life. <clears throat> and yes, the original glove box was completely full of donations from local populations of field animals. So it basically fell apart. Z Car Store makes a plug that plugs into there and caps it off real nicely and makes it look like a factory upgrade type thing. And I think it's about a $40 plug. If you'd rather just go that route, that is a much cleaner, um, much cleaner way to go. I'm going to end up taping all of this up, taping this harness up and making it look real nice like I did with the with the one that I built there. But you can see here uh, it bolts up just like the factory one did. Uh, it lines up with the original factory upper alternator mount and the pulley is is dead on to the the second notch on the fan pulley there so it lines up and tracks just like it should when it's running i've gotten 13.8 volts at the battery with no accessories on so i'm real happy with that so that is all there is to putting the b210 alternator in the dotson um, if you want to go this route you save yourself some money and make your charging system a little less complex um, hopefully this helps you out um, if I did it wrong <laughs> I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments below uh, and I might end up just buying one of those Z car store uh, adapters anyway just to make it I don't know why it needs to look nice in the engine compartment but um, also supporting vendors to support these cars is important too so uh, I'll put the link to that little adapter uh, down below I didn't get one I'm not making any money from this so if you buy one, you're helping out a, a Datsun vendor, not me, which is okay. Um, so on that note, hopefully this saves you a little bit of money and uh, keeps your Datsun running a little bit longer. So until next time, get out there and work on something.